The Haunting of Devil's Lake. It all started a few years ago. Winter had blanketed the world in its icy embrace, and the idea of a weekend escape to the lake house felt like the perfect remedy. Nestled deep within the woods around Devil's Lake, the cabin was a cherished relic passed down from generations. It was a place of nostalgic childhood memories where we had shared stories, roasted marshmallows by the crackling fire, and gazed at the star-studded night sky. My friends, Zoe, Owen, Caleb, Lily, and I had gathered with excitement and a sense of reunion. The scent of the cedar log walls, worn by time and filled with stories, welcomed us. Inside, the cozy interior radiated warmth, its wood-burning fireplace casting a soft, flickering light that danced across our faces. As the evening wore on, we played games, shared old anecdotes, and found solace in the familiarity of our friendships. The worries and stresses of the outside world seemed to fade into the distant horizon, leaving us embraced by the cabin's comforting ambiance. Little did we know that the tranquil aura of the cabin would soon reveal more than just fond memories, and our journey would take an unexpected turn in the days to come. The second day at the lake house began with the promise of new adventures. It was a picture-perfect winter morning, with sunlight glistening off the pristine, snow-covered landscape. Our plans were straightforward and reassuring, sledding down the nearby hills, sipping hot cocoa by the fire, and rekindling the bonds we cherished in this cozy retreat. As the sun dipped below the horizon, we gathered around the warm, crackling fire. The gentle hiss of the logs and the comforting embrace of the cabin walls added to the sense of familiarity and nostalgia. It was a sanctuary, far removed from the complexities of everyday life, and we reveled in the simple joy of being together. Yet, beneath the tranquil surface, an unsettling undercurrent had begun to seep into our experience. A minor disagreement escalated when Caleb, typically easygoing, took an unexpected turn. The atmosphere grew tense, and the carefree laughter from earlier in the day was replaced by anxiety. Caleb's behavior became erratic, and we found ourselves grappling with a side of him we'd never seen before. Fear and confusion etched themselves onto our faces. It was Lily, with her soothing words and calm demeanor, who managed to bring Caleb back from the brink. The evening, initially filled with camaraderie, was now colored by the unsettling events that had transpired. The violence eventually subsided, but the disquiet lingered. Our cozy evening had given way to an atmosphere of uncertainty, leaving us unsettled and unsure of what was to come. Little did we realize that this moment marked the beginning of a series of events that would challenge our sense of security, forever altering the course of our getaway. With the unsettling episode of the previous night behind us, the following morning dawned crisp and promising. The lake house, a place of cherished memories and shared laughter, seemed to wrap us in its comforting embrace once more. The aroma of fresh brewed coffee filled the air, mingling with the smoky scent of the log fire, creating an atmosphere of nostalgia and warmth. The sun, radiant and inviting, bathed the snow-covered landscape in a soft golden light. It beckoned us to explore the winter wonderland outside, sledding down the nearby hills, crafting whimsical snowmen, and savoring mugs of hot cocoa as we embraced the joys of our childhood. As day turned to evening, we gathered around the fire, seeking refuge from the chill that had begun to seep into our bones. Laughter and stories flowed freely, and it was almost as if the unsettling events of the previous night had been swept away by the comforting camaraderie we had cherished. However, amidst the flickering firelight, I couldn't help but notice the change in Lily's demeanor. Ever since Caleb's unsettling outburst, her once sparkling eyes had taken on a distant look, and her laughter seemed to carry a shadow. She spoke less, and her silence spoke volumes, leaving us with unanswered questions and a sense of disquiet. Even as we regaled each other with stories, the conversation subtly shifted to theories and speculations about what could have caused Caleb's dramatic change. In the midst of our attempts to maintain a facade of normalcy, the unease that had quietly settled in our hearts began to deepen. 
It was as if the lake house, so long a source of comfort and joy, had taken on a deeper, more enigmatic persona. As the days at the lake house rolled on, our sense of unease deepened. The once simple pleasures of our shared pastime seemed tainted by an invisible weight, and Caleb's inexplicable transformation continued to haunt our thoughts. Morning arrived with a chill that seemed to seep into the very bones of the cabin. We gathered around the dining table, the aroma of sizzling bacon and hot coffee filling the air, momentarily casting aside our unease. It was during this seemingly routine breakfast that our lives took an abrupt, terrifying turn. Lily, typically a lively presence at our morning gatherings, was conspicuously absent. As we called her name, our voices echoed unanswered through the cabin's rustic halls. Panic gripped our hearts, and a frantic search began. Every nook and cranny was scoured, every corner of the cabin scrutinized. Our shouts of her name seemed to bounce back at us in eerie repetition. It was when we peered out of a window that we witnessed a sight that would forever haunt our memories. Lily, her feet bare, moved with a strange, almost trance-like grace across the frozen surface of Devil's Lake. Her eyes were vacant, unseeing, lost in some distant world we couldn't comprehend. Zoe and I, driven by a mix of terror and determination, rushed to the door without hesitation. We had to save our friend from the perilous ice, even though the very idea defied all reason. As we reached the lake's edge, we were met with the frigid embrace of the winter air and the cruel expanse of the frozen lake. Lily's movements were slow, almost hypnotic, and we could do nothing but watch in horror as she fell through the frozen surface, her form disappearing into the inky depths below. We screamed and reached for her, our hands breaking the surface of the water, but it was as if the lake had claimed her as its own. The icy grip of the water left us gasping and shivering, but our desperate efforts to reach her were in vain. We stumbled back to the cabin, the weight of our loss sinking in, mingling with the shock and disbelief. As we gathered by the fireplace, panic mounting, we attempted to call for help using our cell phones. However, the reality was a harsh and chilling one. All of our cell phones were inexplicably dead, leaving us isolated in this place of unspeakable dread. As we sat there by the fire, a stifling silence filled the room, heavy with the weight of grief and the inexplicable events that had unfolded. The lake house, once a cherished retreat, now loomed ominously, casting long shadows over our shattered sense of security. Anxiety gnawed at our hearts, and we couldn't escape the mounting unease. Lily's chilling disappearance and the puzzling silence of our phones had left us feeling unsettled. The cozy cabin had transformed into a place of confinement, and our once inseparable group had fractured, each of us isolated in our distress. In the flickering firelight, Caleb was the first to speak, his voice trembling with trepidation. He suggested that he should drive to the nearest town and seek help. We all knew it was a risky proposition, especially in the unforgiving winter, but it felt like the only glimmer of hope. Desperation fueled the debate that followed. Owen, realizing the dire circumstances, offered to go, but Caleb declined, explaining that it was probably safer for him to stay. The rest of us, locked in a tableau of fear and uncertainty, hesitated, torn between the fear of being left alone in the cabin and the unnerving events that had already claimed our friend. As the debate continued, our sense of dread deepened. The once comforting cabin had become a crucible of terror, and we were on the brink of making choices that would determine the rest of our lives. A hushed consensus settled in, and the decision was made. Caleb would venture out in search of help, while the rest of us would stay at the lake house. As he wrapped himself in layers of clothing, his determined steps took him towards the front door, leaving us with an eerie sense of isolation and vulnerability. With Caleb's departure, the cabin's atmosphere grew even more oppressive, the vacant spaces echoing with the absence of his presence. As the door closed behind him, the reality of our situation bore down on us like a heavy weight. Zoe, 
who had recently returned from the frozen lake, now appeared like a different person. Her vacant eyes reflected the trauma of witnessing her friend's horrifying fall into the icy depths. She moved with a slow, deliberate grace, as if guided by the lingering memory of that chilling moment. While Caleb's footsteps receded into the distance, the three of us gathered around the dwindling fire, trying to piece together the nightmarish puzzle that had become our reality. The malevolent presence, which none of us dared to acknowledge openly, seemed to have sunk its icy talons into our once joyous gathering. As we whispered in the dimness, each creak and groan of the cabin seemed to echo our growing unease. The silence that followed Caleb's departure enveloped us like a shroud, casting an eerie stillness over the cabin. Zoe, Owen, and I remained seated by the dwindling fire, our faces etched with worry and confusion. The flickering firelight revealed a weariness in Zoe's eyes, a silent reflection of the hours that had passed since Caleb's departure. As minutes turned into hours, we couldn't ignore the haunting realization that a significant amount of time had elapsed. Caleb should have returned by now, and the growing concern only deepened the oppressive atmosphere that had taken root at the lake house. In the dimly lit cabin, Owen and I resumed our conversation in hushed tones, our voices trembling with uncertainty. The cabin had transformed into a place of fear, and the once familiar surroundings had become a source of unease. It seemed as though we were at the mercy of forces beyond our understanding, trapped within the confines of an enigmatic nightmare. Our growing worry finally gave way to a decision, fueled by a sense of urgency. As we packed our essentials, our breaths visible in the frigid air, it was clear that we needed to take action. With each passing moment, the oppressive silence of the cabin became increasingly unbearable. The inexplicable events had turned our once joyous gathering into a haunting ordeal, and we were determined to escape. The cabin, now an oppressive prison, would soon be behind us as we ventured into the chilling night, clinging to the hope that we might yet unravel the mystery and find our missing friend. The night was inescapably long, and we could only imagine what awaited us beyond the cabin's walls. Leaving the lake house behind, we set out into the unforgiving night, driving through the desolate snow-covered landscape. The absence of Caleb and the uncertainty of what lay ahead weighed heavily on our minds. With each passing mile, it became clear that the town wasn't as close as we'd hoped, and Caleb's absence gnawed at our hearts. The drive was eerie, the headlights cutting through the darkness as if we were the last souls on Earth. Our voices were a nervous symphony, but the subject of Caleb remained untouched, a question we didn't dare ask. The town eventually came into view, its lights piercing the frigid night. Arriving, we rushed to the authorities, our hope mingled with anxiety. We recounted the events of that night, the horrifying fall of Lily and Caleb's departure in search of help. We hoped to hear reassuring news, but the authorities had no information about Caleb. He seemed to have vanished without a trace, and the news of his disappearance left us all deeply shaken. Our anxiety deepened as the search for Lily at the frozen lake was recalled. The police had attempted to recover her body, but it was an impossible task until the ice melted in the spring. We were haunted by the chilling realization that we had left her alone out there in the cold and dark. Caleb, however, remained a mystery. No search yielded any sign of his whereabouts. His disappearance was a haunting enigma, an unsettling epilogue to the harrowing events of that weekend. That getaway at Devil's Lake marked us forever, leaving scars that would never fade. But it was especially hard on Zoe. I can't forget the look on her face in the rearview mirror as we drove back. Her once vibrant eyes now empty and soulless. She was never the same after those events and the memory of her vacant stare will forever be etched into my memory. That's all for today, folks. If you've enjoyed today's story, be sure to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what you thought of it and what type of story you would like to hear about next. See you all very soon.